Welcome back to the show. Total Financial Solutions, Safer Money Hour. I'm Eric Halby, along with Jeff Gerard. And your place for news, talk, and information, AM 1220 KHTS. Total Financial Solutions, Safer Money Hour. It's designed really to give you uh, concepts, ideas, things that maybe your traditional financial broker is not telling you about, only because their job, generally speaking, is to hold your money, not necessarily make you money. Now, you might say, uh-huh, uh-huh, same thing. <laughs> Those are night and day. <laughs> Because if, the, if, somebody, if I paid somebody uh, money, I said, here's a job to do. Let's say, I go, hey, Jeff, can you trim those trees, mow the lawn, clean up the, you know, you're just an amazing uh, gardener and arborist. Just, just do all that. And I came out and it looked exactly the same. And you said, okay, sir, pay me. I go, but, but the trees are the same and the grass is the same. You didn't, you didn't do a job. I talked to the trees. Oh, did you hold them? I did. Did you hug them? I did. So if you were to hold and hug my money, but you didn't do anything with it, why am I paying you? Mm. And people say, well, you don't understand, you know, Arif, you know. And then the, if you try to bring that up to the, your financial experts, they get into all these big words and they make that. Uh, and, and at the end, you're going, gosh, what just happened? I don't know, but I guess I should say thank you and give them more money. So uh, I love your example of, of a realtor or a real estate agent. They don't come knocking on your door every year or every quarter after they've sold you a house because it's gone up in value and said, hey, pay me because they didn't do anything. It was because of the market that your house went up or down in value, not yeah, because of anything they did. Yeah. Think about it. As you mentioned, Jeff, you go out and you say, hey, um, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor. You bought, bought a house. Great. Bought it for four fifty, and it goes up to six hundred thousand dollars. Maybe it's taken, back in the day, it might have taken six months, but let's say today it's taken, you know, three or four, five, six years maybe, and now it's gone up in, in price. And you say, wow, that's great. You don't hear the, hi, hi, yeah, hi. It's a realtor here. Um, I understand that you made some uh, equity in your home. Uh, what, yeah. what do you mean? Your well, your home's gone up in value, didn't it? Well, well, yes, it did. Uh, well, pay me, please. You would say, uh, no, when I bought my house, I paid you. Didn't, didn't the seller pay you commission or yes, yes, yes. So why should you continue to pay your broker when sometimes they even lose your money? I was going to say even more ridiculous than that. If the money, if your house stayed the same in value or went down in value, yeah. you'd kick your real estate agent off the porch. Go, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Oh no, no, sir. I, I just want a piece of that. You know, uh, no. In fact, or if it's a paper loss, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't. It's a paper gain. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's either papered or papered up. So we say, how do we make sure that in your financial world, you've built up your assets, you have some money uh, saved. You, you've. Our our goal is to not make you rich. Remember this. Look, that's the difference. Um, you may be at a period of time when you say, I have twenty or thirty years left of full time work. My income is going to come from my job. My assets can sit off to the side. My money can make some money for me. That's great. But my, the, the core principle of what I have, uh, I want to keep some of it safe or I want to do some of it. Great. But my, my conversation with you is when you start getting closer to retirement, I think you should start moving money from risk to safe. That's our opinion. And as you do that and you say, hey, listen, I, I can't afford to have another Brexit or where Great Britain decides to leave the, the European Union and the world falls apart, economically speaking. And then, of course, they announce that they're going to have a, a, a new prime minister, not in three or four or five months, but in three days. Oh, my gosh, you know what's happening to the world. And maybe it's happy. Maybe everybody's excited. Why should that matter on to whether or not you feel like you want to go to work today because traffic is getting worse or your boss is a jerk or a new person comes in and, and is working next to you? And you've got to be concerned about what Iran is doing or what China is doing in the South China Sea or, or what's happening in Washington. What? You're the one that's worked your whole life. So keep this in mind. When we say purpose, there's a reason why I want you to have purpose when you go to work. And the reason is simple. I want you to have a purpose so that you can say and be young. I don't see too many people sitting at home with the joints and their knees and their backs working very well when they're not moving, <laughs> right? All of us have aches and pains. I don't know. I think when she hit 40, Jeff, you're still got a few minutes. But Careful. I resemble that it, remark. <laughs> everything, everything starts to hurt somewhere. And, <laughs> and we say, well, how do you stay young? I think it's because somebody needs you. Um, I'm not a psychologist, but I play one on TV and radio. So <laughs> let me tell you, my, the biggest uh, thing that I have seen that pushes people in the right direction 
is clearly a sense of purpose. I agree, and I've I've shared this example before, where I've seen people identify themselves with their career. That becomes their their focus, their drive, what gets them up in the morning. Now look, we all have bills. We a lot of us have children, obligations, people, and uh, and family counting on us financially speaking, but. The majority of people that get up and go to work, I would, this is my opinion, I don't have any stats to, to prove this, but my opinion is the majority of people that get up and go to a job for 10, 20, 15, 20, 30 years is because they like their job. They know someone's counting on them to be there tomorrow to go do what they're going to do, and, and hopefully they're good at it. Now, that right there in and of itself creates purpose for someone, and when somebody retires, I mean, you said it, Arif, the, the, the biggest regret people have when they retire is they're they've, retired. They've retired because that was what they were used to doing and where they spent their time. How many folks do you know in your life that are a center of influence, that are your circle of influence that you work with? Many people hang out with the people that they work with, and that just becomes their their sense of camaraderie and their, their fulfillment. And, their, and even if it's not the thing that they would have chosen, it's by default rather than design, and now it just becomes their life. You take that away from someone whether they retired or they were a company was right sizing and they said oh you know what we're going to force someone into retirement it doesn't matter when you leave that job after decades of spending time there every single day what do you do with yourself look i don't mind a, a vacation a two week or a one month vacation uh, i love it when people come in especially when they're young i'm going to retire i've done it what are you going to do oh i've got you know how much stuff i've got to do around the house I've got the garage i got to clean up that's right the i got to you know, sort through the clo- backyard the yeah. closet okay so that's done in i have to wash two the weeks. dog oh uh, no yeah <laughs> no 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 I, it's going to take me longer than two weeks great yeah. let's call it three months yeah and then what and, and I bring that to you because you need to know that as you plan a transition, all that is is a process of going from a job where you have to wake up and you have to be there to a place where you want to wake up and you want to be there. Because some of you were born to complain. I don't know if you were raised that way. I don't know if you were born in a negative house. I don't know if your mom and dad, it just uh, that's what they did is com- uh, complain all day long. I was going to use the B word, but I'm not going to do that. Wine and complain. Girl dog and complain. You did it. And that's what your life was about. Yeah. But I know deep inside, you really want to be needed. And I get it. The project has to be done. And my coworker is blah, blah, blah. And, uh, oh, yeah? We'll just quit. Well, I don't know about quitting. Well, just leave. Well, I don't know about leaving. Change jobs. Well, I don't know about it. So I get it. You have a part of you that wants to whine and complain. But on the other side of it, realize you are fulfilled. Somebody needs you. You do a great job. Maybe others can do it. But you know what, darn it? You are doing it. And when you are the one doing it, it gets done. And it gets done right. And when you transition from that job where they're paying you to live and you say, and now it's going to be pension and or social security, right? Whatever's on the other side. Mm -hmm. And now I have that income. Now I'm ready to retire. Then you just transition. Take a month off. I don't care. But go and volunteer at the food pantry. Help the Children is an amazing organization. Three days a week they distribute food. And maybe one other day a week. Go in one day a week. It doesn't matter. They could use you any time. They help families, 125, 150 families plus per week. I think overall the whole organization does 8,000 bags of groceries a day. Wow. A day. <laughs> they distribute through churches and charities and nonprofits all throughout the San Fernando Valley, Santa Clarita Valley. They make it work. How about the senior center? Some seniors there, and I know this, are multimillionaires, millionaires, lots of money, boom. Why do they hang out at a place where they pay th- two dollars for for lunch or breakfast <laughs> or whatever? It's, yeah, it's for the company. For the people. Yeah. Because if they didn't show up, somebody would care. Do you see the difference, guys? So I want you to plan and and say, okay, look, I can volunteer at the senior center, not because I need the money, because my paycheck now comes from my retirement, my social security, my uh, fixed indexed annuities, my money that I have with Total Financial Solutions, with uh, my money at brokerage accounts, whatever. But your life is what changes. When somebody looks at their watch as you walk in the door and goes, 
you're here. That's just kind of cool, isn't it? I would say so. It could be a senior. You could help out at so many different places. How about preschools? I think one of the best programs we have in the state, maybe even in the top five in the nation for child development, right here in Santa Clarita at College of the Canyons. Maybe you have a background in teaching and you want to substitute once in a while. I mean, do you get where I'm going, you guys? Yeah. There are, you have a little extra money, you're a bit more adventurous, your knees and back work a little bit better than most. Jump on a plane and go work for two weeks in Africa. A friend of mine is there now, three weeks. I think he's been there. Nice. Another, another good friend of mine, actually I forgot about, has been there for about a year and he's gonna stay another two more years. Hmm. And each of them have a different uh, organization or a different group and their job is simple. To go make somebody else's life a little bit better. But you know what? Because they work with me and others uh, and, and probably other financial people too. On the first of every month, guess what they get in their bank account? Nice little paycheck. That's right. And that debit card works, <laughs> whether you're here, there, or anywhere. Yeah. So what would you say for the folks that are working and maybe have, a, do you think it's maybe a five-year horizon before they anticipate retirement that they should start looking at some of those extracurricular activities? Because, I mean, really, and this is, let me qualify the question. When we talk about all the things we're going to do after retirement, we're still operating under the mindset that we only have maybe a day or two this weekend and then we have to go back to the grind and then a day or two the following week oh and then my cousin's coming from out of town and then all of these things these life events happen so something as simple as cleaning out the garage that may take us three months so we're operating under those under those uh, current mindsets versus i'm gonna have seven saturdays in a row what should people do five years prior to retirement i think as you get closer to retirement you have to look at two big important things. I think they're both important. Health and finances. So you should always be working on your health and always be working on your finances. Yes. But that five, eight, ten years before retirement, stay away from long-term debt. Put yourself in a position to where you're not going to have a 20-year loan on something. Okay. If you're in the middle of it, that's fine. But I don't want you to pick up something brand new unless you can say, when I am retired with the money that I'm going to make that I know for sure, I can live on those dollars? No problem. We're on track. That's fine. But what I don't want you to do is to say, I'm going to figure it out as I go. Remember, Jeff, we talked about this. A gentleman was a principal. He had $50,000 saved. Yes. He was making $80,000 a year. <laughs> and his pension was 4000 per month. In other words, he basically had a year and a half of money in retirement. His plan was, we'll figure it out when I get there. Incredible. I said, what I think you need to do is plan and pretend like you're living on $4,000 a month today. And then, if it's enough to live on, great. If it isn't, you go, uh-oh, I must not be making enough money. I must go back to work, right? Because I, I get that he may want to step down. I mean, there's always reasons to leave a job. Maybe you've, it's, you're bored or it's just time to move on. Sure. But what I don't want you to do is to be put in a position where you are forced to do something you don't want to do because five or eight years earlier, you said, I need a 30-year or let's say a 20-year loan on a, on a motorhome. And that $875 a month payment is not $875 because first you have to earn it. Right. And if you're not going to work, you're pulling it from your retirement accounts or your pension. And when you're doing that, guess what? You have to pay first. You haven't paid taxes on it yet. Surprise. So that $875 a month is not really $875. Maybe it's, oh, I don't know, $1,100 or $1,200. That means you're withdrawing from your account. It means it can never earn any more interest. It's gone, $1,200 a month. That $1,200 a month is gone forever so that you can buy something that's $875 a month. That's going to go down in value. The next day. <laughs> So 875 really gets you maybe four or $500 in value because they depreciate very quickly, especially at the beginning. So now you're taking $1,200 out of your account to, li to, to get back in your hand a value of 500 bucks. That's just ridiculous. But people will do it. You take uh, emotional words and decisions and you put those on top of numeric Values. One plus one is two. Whether I feel like it's four, whether my friends on the left want it to really be 57, one plus one is two, period. I don't care what you feel like. Take a look at Detroit, 
Rhode Island, San Bernardino, Stockton, Michigan, Puerto Rico, Mammoth Lakes, Iceland, Iceland, a country, all filed bankruptcy or went into default, <laughs> right? Do you understand? Or, or on the verge, as in the state of California is now, what, 127 billion upside down as of last night's report. And I was with a friend the other day, and she said, well, well, we have a surplus in the state of California. I said, I, look, I get it. You can look at, at some of the little, uh, you know, certainly those publications don't come from the, the, the conservative element. They come from the liberal element. Politically speaking, I don't care. You can say whatever it is. It's just a fact. We are $127 billion upside down. So guess who is going to pay the taxes? So what do you think is going to happen to your $875 a month payment? You may have a 20-year payment, but they may change the tax rules halfway through that, which means it used to cost this much money. Now it's going to cost even more. Hmm. You're retired. Your 26-year-old kid who makes you know, $15 an hour, who's perfectly happy sleeping on your couch and getting free Wi-Fi with his you know, $3 latte, that kid doesn't have any money. It's 50000 in student loan debt. Just earlier today, a client, 30-year-old son, MBA, wonderful guy, but brilliant, my gosh, stays at home, student loan debt over his ears, can't save a penny if his life depends on it. Oops, did he play the wrong game? Yep. He got suckered down the road that says, go to college, get a good degree, take out as much student loans as possible, the world is waiting for you. Hello? Uh, uh, wh wh uh, uh, hello? Why isn't anybody answering my call? because you think you can come to work with messy hair and, and uh, you know, flip-flops or something, or play basketball and take a nap. That's why. Wait, there's no job for b playing basketball and taking a nap? A friend of mine, uh, her son just got a job at, at Facebook. Playing basketball, taking naps? H that was his dream job. Well, well, Facebook or Google, he's a computer. Okay. I don't know, all those kids are computer geniuses. My kid's a computer genius. and My six-year-old's a computer genius. Yeah, at least compared to me. <laughs> and so these kids just know what they're doing. Well, they work at a place like that. It's a dream job. Why? Because you kind of show up when you want, and you kind of do what you want, and you got a job to get done, and it's unlimited food. You're no more than, I think it's 100 feet or 125 feet from food at any one time. And they have snacks everywhere, like candy and, and, and uh, M&Ms and, you know, all the, the crazy stuff. They had to hide it now and put the salads up front so that, you know, socially you could still say, right? Because symbolism is over substance all the time. But you can't have more than an eight-ounce soda. Stupid. All right, we'll be back in just a minute. How do you make sure that your financial life is not about platitudes? Well, Total Financial Solutions here for you when we come right back. Total Financial Solutions, AM 1220, Safer Money Hour on KHTS. I'm Arif Halaby. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Total Financial Solutions, Safer Money Hour. Arif Halaby on your place for news, talk, and information. Hey, come by Total Financial Solutions. Uh, we're next door to KHTS right here on uh, Main Street, 24322, 24320, right in that block, the old Newhall Hardware Building. Take a look inside. We can watch you walk by. You can watch us. In fact, uh, we watched four people just walk by everybody's talking but looking down at their cell phones i'm surprised one of them just should stop <laughs> watch the pop 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 running behind each other it's like a normal thing right everybody lives on their cell phones uh, i'm not as uh, crazed about it as everybody else seems to talk about because if my uh, you know, people at a park and they're all well if you were at a park and you were reading a book people go oh how studious <laughs> If you were at a park and you were drawing, you know, oh, look at they're doing a sketch pad. Oh, that's just wonderful. But if they're texting or communicating, and, you know, today people use their social media as a news source. You use it as a, a communication source. You use it as a business source. So it's, I'm not as excited about it as everybody else thinks. And you know what it also does? If I have a choice, uh, a father that may have some communication issues with his daughter, and you say, you know, a father's going to choose to communicate by text or not at all, I, I would take the give me the social media or the, or the text. So I don't think it's the end of the world, but I do think that, you know, sometimes we overdo it. But uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I don't know why you would ever do that unless you had a lot of kids and forgot. That must be a really big drain. It's the old way where they used to just dump it over the edge of the... Oh, yeah, that's before my time. Out the window. I never saw those types of bathtubs that you have. It doesn't do it anymore, me. folks. Now, it's very straightforward. If you I love your children, 
get them started in social media as soon as possible. <laughs> you know, we always talk about this. Uh, uh, one of the things is very key, I think, is the day your child is born is to buy their name as a URL and as some of the more popular, like Gmail and Hotmail. I don't know about Hotmail, but certainly Gmail or Ymail. Uh, and you buy their name, you know, joesmith.com or joesmith at gmail.com so that you have their, uh, their name and or maybe some general iterations of it. But you can build it so that, you know, you protect them. They don't know anything about it. But in the future, why wouldn't we want them to own their own name and their own URL? Uh, I think that's pretty key, especially if you have a common name. Certainly by now it might be too late, but uh, there's enough out there where... Yeah, uh, poor Joe Smith. JoeSmith.com's taken. I don't know who I don't think is. he'll ever have his own .com. Poor guy's getting all this free advertisement from us. <laughs> Just like, buy plumbing supplies. Why does everybody want a sink? <laughs> For the baby, that's what it is, a bathwater. All right, well, we're talking about your financial future. What does it take to keep yourself from being somebody who ends up, oh, I don't know what the right word is, but um, messed up when it comes to retirement? <clears throat> and I don't think it's because of financially speaking. A lot of people do, and they say things like, oh, well, I go back to work because I like the people. That's amazing, that's great, but I can promise you that most people that, quote, like people aren't a... Uh, if they have a choice, the people in Fiji are probably a little nicer than some of the grumpy folks that come on a holiday weekend at your local big box store and your greeter. I'd have to agree with you. Maybe. I've seen them. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes you might like people, but your, your choices are limited because you're forced to be around folks that aren't always that nice. I want you to make a decision early on. Now, look, if, you, if it's too late or circumstances have occurred, I get it. How do we make the best of the situation? Take notes because here's going to be some things that I think can kind of build in some of the, quote, best of the situation that you're stuck with. Go through and eliminate every single expense that you can that is not necessary. Now, I don't mean the heat or electricity, but goodness, let's be smart, you know, notch things up a little bit. Don't feel like you have to stay in a house just because you and your husband were there 30 years. I spoke to a lady yesterday. Her, uh, her husband passed away. She lives in Porter Ranch. She has a beautiful home up in Knollwood. It's very nice, but it's very, very large, and it's too big for her and to keep up the garden and the pool and all the other stuff. And since her husband's passed away, he was the one that did most of that. She said, Arif, I, I kind of feel guilty. We've lived here for 25 years, uh, but what do I do? And, and I said, you Today, this is part of your retirement. It's part of your future. You may have to look at this as a time to move on, and you take those funds. You can buy a condo if you want less uh, uh, what, maintenance and, and maybe more people around you for sometimes a better safety feel. Uh, there's reasons to do things that are outside of what you would have done had you still been married, whether he, he passed away or divorced, or whether she passed away or divorced, uh, or whether or not uh, you know you had minor children. Sometimes a home and a neighborhood is perfect when you have little kids, but now they're all grown. We see this a lot when it comes to homes that are inherited. It's because your folks worked so hard for that, or your grandparents worked so hard, and they had it all those years, 30, 40 years, and you just can't let go of it because you're the one now that's getting rid of that heirloom, getting rid of that piece of that staple in the family. I mean, you have to just kind of go with it as long as you can and then say, look, I, we've got to part from this. This is either too costly. You know, I have a friend that's uh, living down in Hollywood. He was not used to living down in Hollywood. And uh, his folks passed away a couple years apart. And now he's got this great big home with a great big pool on a great big piece of property down in the Franklin District in Hollywood. And uh, there's lots of traffic and there's lots going on. And guess what? Just like you said, all that maintenance of the property, all the upkeep was done by dad. Mm -hmm. And now guess who's doing it? It's done by son. And he's going, man, this is a full-time job. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't do anything else but take care of this property. So at some point, there's a, either a diminishing return or you have to say, look, one foot's on the dock and one's on the boat. And, you know, you got to make a decision either or you're going to get wet. So uh, at some point, you have to just really take a look at it from the practical standpoint and say, what's going to make the most sense here? And often that, that make the most sense part of the conversation uh, is truly something you have to dig inside of you. Others that love you will give you opinions, but often those opinions opinions are what they would do in that situation with their uh, fears and hopes, situation, financial backing, uh, skill set, right? So the, their, their point of view, and it's the best you can ask for, You're not, they're not trying to hurt you, but their point of view is going to be, mom and dad, why don't you just retire? You'd say, well, you guys all have a life. <laughs> right. You're busy. 
Who, who am I going to hang out with? Right? So there's, there's sometimes a fear that says, that's great, but you want me to be lonely? So appreciate and understand that. Now, they should be developing also, because they may not always be able to work, maybe they get fired, right? Sometimes jobs change. They should also be developing uh, uh, outside volunteer work or interests that give them a transition, just like you should. Whether the transition is, and you know, a, an old friend of mine from, from church, in fact, years ago, uh, uh, retired, retired early from the city of, uh, well, I won't tell you the city, but one of the smaller cities in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, when he retired, decided he wanted to backpack and hike, and that was his thing. So we'd hike up through the national parks. Nice. And if you follow through, guys, you saw that uh, you know, a group of them passed away about a year ago. Uh, they were down in a canyon, and a flood came from you know miles away. The rain came and w washed That's through these sad. canyons, and and they were pinned up, and the, a group of them passed away. Well, he was one of them. Mm. And so, although Mark retired at a young age, he wasn't even I don't think he was even 65 or 61 or something. I mean, he was. Wow. May, he might have been 60, but certainly not uh, much more than that. And uh, lived an active life and loved what he did, but it, you know at the same time. Uh, it was him that, that, that was one of those that passed away. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, you can enjoy activities, be, be safe, right? Mm -hmm. Do something that you're used to doing or, or understand your limitations. But what I don't want you to do is to get out, retire, go from, you know, going from 30 miles an hour and you're now stopped. And you just sit around and you go, okay, what day is it again? And you either play surfing on the net, doing crazy things on the, on the web, or you're watching your latest uh, scream and yell TV show it, you know, who's doing what to whose boyfriend and who's got baby's daddy going on the other side, right? Those are not fulfilling and interesting. Uh, it's a lot to keep up with. It's a full-time job just trying to make sure you get it all right. Yeah, especially... Not that I would know. Especially when you know when family and friends come over and you say, did you guys hear about the... And you go, what? Oh, yeah, did you guys hear about... You know this lady... In, and your, your social is if you were part of that group. That's, that's a clue, we say. That's a sign that maybe, just maybe, getting a little too close to, what is it, uh, Maury? Is it Sally Jesse Raphael? I don't know if she's on anymore. I don't know if she is. Yeah, it's got to be Maury. Yeah. Maury and, and uh, who's that kid, uh, the, the guy with no hair who's, who was the, the bouncer guy for, for one of those people? Steve Wilco, there we go. Yeah. Right? So Steve. So those two guys, you know, they always have people screaming. And how do I know this? Because I happen to visit my dad every once in a while. They're the, doing it right, though. In the middle of They're the day. They're still going. Yeah. Man. So part of what you need to have is through the process is a plan. And I want that plan to have something that in includes fun and excitement. And you don't always have to spend money. But don't worry about spending money. Get a budget together. The last thing I want you to do is to be 87 years old with millions of dollars saved and your health is a wreck and you have no friends and you don't leave the house. Well, what is that all about? So that you can work really hard to give money to people that don't appreciate ever earning it? I, I don't mind inheriting, you know, giving money to an inherited uh, group of, of people, but please don't think that they will appreciate money the same that you did. So enjoy it, spend it within reason, but enjoy it and spend it. You don't take the vacation, you don't buy the boat, you don't go fishing, you don't go on the cruise so that you can give your money to your kids so that they can do what? Go fishing, <laughs> go on the cruise, buy the boat, and do the things that... Uh, yeah. You Great. know, Mom wanted us to do that. Yeah, she would have she wanted did. us to go to Hawaii. Yeah, she did. She really appreciated the fact that you're the one that gets to go spend money that, that <laughs> she busted her hiney for. All right, so guys, I want you to go to hometownstation.com. Click on Total Financial Solutions. That'll shoot you over to us. And uh, you can click on uh, send us a question. We have a comment. We'll answer it sometimes directly. Uh, sometimes we'll put it on the air, depending if it's if we think it's important. We'll do both. And, and the purpose of that is so that we can help others, because this is a scary time. It's a scary time for you, me, for all of us, as we are trying to work through and navigate some of the the crazy social things that are going on in our society. Uh, when you have a group of people that are unemployed, that are quote educated or at least think they are. And a group of young men and women with all that testosterone and, and uh, what is it, violin vinegar or whatever it is. Something like that. Yeah. And they think that they are right and the rest of the world is wrong. 
uh, you're going to have social outbursts like this. It happens every 20, 25 years. Uh, it's a little scary now. It's a little scary now because the organizational system is done with a, the click of a, of a smartphone. And that's, that's something to be careful. So I understand concern. I understand it. But TFS Wealth, write that down. Stands for Total Financial Solutions. TFSWealth.com. Purposeful for you to send us an email. Check and see. We have some up upcoming workshops, some things that you can do. We'll be happy to uh, follow through, if you will, and uh, give you some information. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Hallaby. That's Jeff Gerard. We're here every week at this time talking about your family's future. On AM 1220, this is KHGS.